All right. Good morning. Welcome to Saturday, the free day for SQL Bits, the original Saturday for SQL Bits. So excited to have you here, the final day of SQL Bits. I'm Bob Ward, a principal architect, Azure Data Team. I am not in a dream anymore. I've felt like I've been in a dream since Thursday, but uh, it's all kind of coming together. So thank you so much for being together. This is kind of really a fun session for us, and I hope the same for you here in the room and also online. I've got a really special set of guests today as part of a panel for us to talk some SQL with you, to talk some Azure data to you. So what I'd like to do first is I'd like to have them introduce themselves and kind of what they do on our team at Microsoft. I've also got some other folks in the room here that are part of our staff. As you ask questions, as you ask questions, I will repeat the question once I hear it, but also, Dan, raise your hand. Dan is going to be running around the room if you've got a question to repeat yours so we can both hear it and we can hear it online as well. Anne, raise your hand here. Anne is monitoring the online chat. You can't see her, but she's monitoring it. And when you ask a question online, Dan will come and also tell us what those questions are. We really want you to hear from you what burning questions you have, and what's going on with our products and services. All of us here are from the engineering team. So let's start with Pam. You, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little about you? Sure, hi everybody. My name is Pam Lahoud and I am the uh, lead PM for SQL Server running in Azure Virtual Machine. Awesome, Anna Hoffman. Not the Hello. host today. Not this the host. This seems awkward for you, doesn't it? It's very awkward. I know, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. Uh, explaining what I do is very difficult for me. Wear a lot of hats. I think people can relate. Uh, but you probably know me as the host of Data Exposed, which I'll plug a gazillion times during this, so I apologize. Uh, <laughs> but I'm also a program manager working with all these folks, and I also work on some of the other database services as well. Denzel. Hi, I'm Denzel. I'm a program manager. I work primarily on the hyperscale tier. so. Any of you using Hyperscale, wanting to use Hyperscale, grab me even if you have further questions after this. Pedro. Yes, I'm uh, Pedro Lopes. I'm also a program manager on the team, and I work mainly to release SQL 22 and on the QPE team. But also some vast SQL experience I sense in the panel here today, right? I think so. I, I Around 100 years all in all, I think. 100 say. years? <laughs> Almost, oh my right? Well, I mean... I, 20, are, we 20 starting, years? are we already starting with yeah. this knock? Are we, are we doing that? Like, okay, got it. It might so. be more than 100. I don't know. So I've also got, I've I'm got not that old, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> you guys. I was yeah, I'm not the there. Bob, Bob yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that really adds on to it. <laughs> hey, I've got some other of our colleagues here in the audience as well. We might call on them to answer some of our questions. But hey, let's just, just go right. Away. We've got to get to your questions, right? Let's start here in the room. I'm going to do this so I can see you. Somebody break the ice and start with a question. Look at that, right there. Dan, come on, Dan, let's go. Yeah. Go, Dan, go, go, go. Um, yeah, I would like to ask, uh, is it really possible to have a common threshold for current and the database of configuration in the future? Dan, what's the yeah. question, just so we'll know? Yeah, so the question is, will it be possible to have the cost threshold for parallelism be configurable at the database scoped level in the future? All right, panel. That's for Pedro. Right? Um. Pedro. <laughs> Possible? It's it's a possibility, but it's not something we're we're it's in our radar. So please uh, enter that feedback and let's see if it accrues more more votes. That's that's really important to understand how widespread a, a certain need is. And if you if you if this yeah, we this have some, we have several workloads with customers, especially when you have different database applications running different databases. They would like to have the cost threshold for one application different from another one. And instead of separating two different machines, mm -hmm. like to have them in one. Uh, Understood. We just need, because we work at a, every investment that we do, it, it's it's done at, at scale. It needs to, we need to understand that it, it affects positively affects um, the let's say the eighty percent mark of all the customers that want to work on a certain scenario. So that's why we. I know it's kind of repetitive that we ask you to go to aka.ms swag SQL feedback, enter your feedback there. If it's already there because someone else has the same need, just vote it up. Because that's really important for us when we're planning to look at that uh, that data coming from directly from users. I have a feeling that site is going to be referenced by our panel today. What's that site again you go to? AKA.ms WAC SQL Feedback. AKA. And okay. SQL, it's not SQL Server, it's SQL Engine, so Hyper Azure everything, SQL, Azure everything. SQL, MI, okay. um, SQL Server itself, everything. That's the place to enter your feedback or vote up 
feedback that you, that you think is important. Okay, thank you. Let's go online, and. Yes, uh, there are a number of features, functions, enhancements in SQL Azure, not yet in SQL Server. Uh, can we expect these to be added in a future uh, cumulative update for SQL Server 2019? Panel. I'm sorry, but that, that's very vague. If, if you can give us a couple of examples of what you're saying. Because in the database engine, um, so everything that's database engine centric uh, makes it into SQL Server. Um, sometimes we can't make it in a CU because there are technical limitations in what we can put in a CU, uh, but that, that makes it uh, vNext material. SQL 22, clarify. Uh, yes, yeah, so what's coming for SQL 22 has been possibly in Azure for some time, or it's also coming net new in Azure more or less at the same time. Um, if, but everything that's database engine centric will be, uh, there will be parity with, with Azure. Yeah. Uh, to expand on that, uh, you know, some of the new features are not going to be ported to earlier versions. Uh, you know, if, if something ships after SQL 2019 ships on Azure, it would be in vNext, not... And we have several yeah. examples of yes. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, in so, general, would you guys say, though, that there are some things that don't make sense? I mean, we're not putting Linux features, obviously, in Azure SQL yeah. Database, but Denzel, talk a little bit about Azure SQL Database surface area. Sometimes some things don't get there because it's a database, right? Some instance level thing, something yeah, like sure. that. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah, instance level features won't make it into you know, SQL DB. And there are certain right. things which are blocked because of security and things of that right. nature, right? right? So, But core engine features within the database, most everything should make it. But for Pam, yeah. Azure VM? Right, well, yeah, Azure VM is just SQL Server. So whichever, it all's there. Yeah, yeah, whatever version of SQL Server you're running, it's going to be exactly the same. On yeah. And okay. So did get a specific example. Okay. Uh, row number for spring, uh, sorry for string split, ETF. It's coming. Coming in. SQL 22. SQL 22. 22. Look yep. at that. There we go. There you go. Already. You there heard we it go. here well first. Well done, Pedro. It's going to be the highlight. <laughs> I hope they're all that way, Pedro. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what else, who else in the audience has a question? Back there, Dan, in the back. Do you have any news and updates about the sign-up SQL dedicated pool uh, of Generation 3? Yeah, so do you have any updates about Gen 3? Uh, Gen 3. Of, uh, SQL sign -ups pool. of the uh, SQL sign-ups dedicated pool. Gen 3. Gen 3. Synapse. Synapse. Do I have Synapse, anybody sorry. on the yeah. panel of the room wants to take a shot at that one? Denzel's kind of like, no, I do I even not. try to do that? <laughs> no Denzel, comment. Okay, so Stuart Padley's <laughs> shaking his head. Like, Stuart's like, I don't want, I'm not going to go tackle that. Uh, <laughs> who wants to take a shot at it? I think we'll have to get back on that yeah. one. Okay. I, th I think it's delayed, but I don't know. I'm not. So the panel is saying right now that we don't have a specific answer on when that's coming and when that's going to happen, so you'll have to stay tuned. No booing allowed, sorry. <laughs> no booing allowed. So, okay, uh, you wanna, we want to switch. Do we have anybody else online right now, or you want to switch? In, oh, we got yep. another online. Here we go. Got an online. All right. Uh, with all the new IQP adding multiple plans, is size of the plan cache changing? Pedro. Uh, the size of the plan cache? No. The, the, is there a limit to how many plans we can have in the cache? Well, yes. And, and because we understand that uh, with some of the new features that could be, let's say, a proliferation of the number of plans, yes, we have in, set a, a hard limit on the number of plans for a single um, query hash that you may have. So, Pedro, the, the concept is, is that, if I remember correctly, this is like parameter sensitive plan optimization. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I've been telling people, we're not going to have like a plan per user necessarily, right? It's more about what parameters make sense for what plans, based on stats. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll go into a lot of detail on that feature today. My, do you my have a session dive. today where you're talking about this? Yeah, I do. I love shameless plugs on the panel. <laughs> no plugs. <It's> perfect. <laughs> perfect. All plugs. <laughs> oh, is there, is there further clarification online? There, there, there's an additional... Okay. Follow-on question. We, we will allow it. The right. panel, we will, we, will, we, will, we will allow it. We will allow it. From somebody else. Yeah. Oh, so, from, well, okay, we'll allow it. You're right there. On the, okay, go ahead. Uh, so there are some very impressive benefits shown in the demos of intelligent query processing, but are there any known downsides, risks we should be aware of? Uh, great question, actually. Um, one of the principles that has always guided um, IQP, and it's certainly true um, in this new generation of, of, of features and scenarios, is the do no harm principle. 
So for C feedback, for DOP feedback, for PSP feedback, we have embedded uh, regression, um, regression detection logic. So we'll always go back to a, a, a better place than if we sometimes regress. It can happen. I mean, um, because, for example, PSP, it's based on stats. It's based on looking at histograms. If they are not accurately portraying the underlying data distribution, um, we, we may get something wrong. But then upon recompilation, or if we detect something is wrong, we, we can go back. So um, that happens with C feedback, that happens with others. Pedro, I like the do not harm thing, but also remind me this. One thing you've always done with IQP is everything can be kind of uh, granularly affected, right? You can, ch you can change it. You actually turn off one of these things, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. At, at the, the database level, level. At the database level, obviously. At yeah, some, so if you want level. some of them and you like them, but you don't want one of them, I could actually turn that off. Is that right? Absolutely. Perfect, yeah. perfect. And okay. in addition to that, yeah. uh, if you're using <laughs> third-party apps, query store hints also. Query store hints are, are a great way for DBAs to control some of that. Right? Okay. Okay, from the audience now, let's go back to our audience right there, right next to you, Dan. Ah. Yes. Um, distributed availability groups, um, the master data, um, being, being able to get that through, is, is, is that, are there plans for that to be part of the, what's I'm not sure I heard the question. Over? Instance Dan's layers. gonna repeat it. Dan's yeah, repeat so it. For, uh, for distributed availability groups, um, are there plans to uh, get the master data oh, through? System data. The, the system, system data. System, database. system yeah. database. Yeah. So we're talking about contained availability groups. But distributed availability. But this distributed, distributed. Yeah. yeah. In the distributed scenario, no. no. So, but, so just a, just yeah. a question uh, to clarify. You mean system level objects like logins and stuff, or are you talking? Yeah, yeah, and jobs yeah. and. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So it's contained. Data, but so, it's, so Pedro, I think you're. So maybe we just be clear. So we kind of said something already a little bit this conference about contained AGs. Mm -hmm. Correct. What is that? And then that probably won't work for distributed. But wh how will that work for just availability groups? Right. So. Um, we're, we're finally coming out with, with the concept of contained AGs um, in SQL 22, and that's the ability to, to have master and massive system databases carry on with the AG, which means, in turn, that you'll have contained objects like uh, logins and, and jobs, for example. They'll be able to um, go along with, with the AG. And that's, that's an unblock, but that's for, let's say, normal AGs. Yeah, it wouldn't work for distributed, for distributed AG. No. But can I, we can say something like, you heard it here in the panel today. So Pedro said something is you, new, but you've already kind of said you it. You said it yesterday, I did, didn't but I don't, think everybody saw, I don't know if everybody saw it. I didn't hear anybody <laughs> like go, there was nobody did a cartwheel in the aisle now, right? But I mean, that's hey. Surprising. That's surprising. You would exactly, think that that would, would be cartwheel yeah, worthy. Yeah. <laughs> but you heard it here, let's say we heard it here first. Pedro has said, contain AGs coming in SQL Server 2022. Okay, online? Maybe, is there anybody else? No? no? Okay, in person here, let's see. Anybody else have a question right now? Back in the back. Yeah, so for transactional replication, where there'll be multi-master capability in SQL 2022. Ooh. Yes. Another Pedro <laughs> answer. Yeah, yes. we could have just stayed home, man. We yeah. <laughs> you, go ahead, you can do no. it. <laughs> I don't actually have the I answer. I love that. So. Like, yeah, if it's you'd like you, to take Pedro. a shot at that. Um, yes, uh, we're, we're multi-master capability comes with peer-to-peer -peer replication. We've, we added uh, last writer wins uh, conflict resolution. Um, we actually added that already in CU 16 for SQL 2019. I, I think that's the one. Um, so it's, it's also coming in SQL 22. Um, we are expecting to have a few performance enhancements in that scenario, but the basic scenario of uh, multi-master uh, with last right win, last writer wins replication, uh, conflict detection, sorry, it's in 2019 already. Awesome. Online? Yep, Dan? Dan's really getting the steps in, man. He knew it, yeah. right? He told me he was going to be jogging around, and <laughs> Dan comes in this to get the this online this question. Is, this is this is from me. Ah. Oh, it's from you. <laughs> now, you didn't tell us, and you go ahead. Ed. Is it's this okay. allowed? We're just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> if there were one feature you could have a time machine to go back and remove or not implement, what would you do? Oh. You want so to oh, eat to each of them have to say that? Oh, that's awesome. Except yeah. I don't have to because I'm the host. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, so for, for, for each of the panelists, uh, if there were one feature that you could go back in time and remove, uh, which would it be? And uh, I won't. I, I did not my, ahead my of time, time. <laughs> coordinate this with Anne, I promise you. <laughs> but Pam, start with you. Oh man, I was like, please don't start with me. Of course I'm gonna start with you. 
Come on, sequel goddess. No, I, it's just going to open a can of worms if I say it. Go no. for it. What would you change? Okay. How, okay. That's better, yes. Like, if I could go back in time and implement it differently? Yes, yeah, that sounds good. But, is it, but by the way, is it somebody that somebody's working on in here in the room, or a no, team? Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> Yeah. You ready? So, yeah. I'm going to drop it. Stretch, DB. Oh, no. no. <laughs> you had to say it. You had to say it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Okay, I'm done now. I'm By the way, panel, I forgot to tell you guys, I think they're recording this. Uh, <laughs> and, it's, and it's streaming on And it's TV. streaming. Yeah. So, Asad, I'm gonna get in so we're sorry. Much can, can, you, sorry can, can you plead the fifth? <laughs> <laughs> Anna. She's in foreign soil. It doesn't okay, work. Okay, Anna. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, I'm, Anna, I'm not sure I, I want to take Anna, this Anna, let's, Come on, come on. What do you think, Anna? Let's go. What would I change? Think about these some of the Azure SQL stuff you've been working on, and like, what? What the heck? I don't know. Well, can I, we come I, back to you? I would yeah, change yeah, yeah. a bunch so? around the elastic set of families in SQL. Elastic jobs, elastic, you know, even the naming, all, all of that. Uh, Yes. Can cause a little bit of confusion, has caused a little yes. bit of confusion. For in sure, customers, right? for sure. Pedro. Yeah. So if, if I could change something, yeah. not, not, not. Let's do not the change. Happen. I think the change is good, yes. <laughs> um, anything around, or almost everything around in memory or LTP. In memory LTP, yeah, that's fair. That was another one I was thinking. That's too. fair. Yeah, that's there's fair. a few things that. And I totally. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just have, kind of back her up. I totally agree with her on stretch, on stretch, stretch DB. DB. I would, yeah. Sorry, Assad, if you're listening to this. So. <laughs> hey, Anna, have you thought about something, Anna? You, you want to? I really don't know. I mean, like. She would course. like to trade places with you right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Bia Kulpa, she came up and she said, she said, how much can I pay you to be here and you be there? I'm like, that's why I'm the host. Okay, I will answer it. Sure. Okay. okay. Knowing what I know now, after 28 years at Microsoft, can TempDB just freaking work? I mean, if, if I hey, would have got, if I would have hey, got, hey, now listen. No, no, but if I had to go back, <laughs> if I had to go back, yeah. I would make it in, in a way that they never even knew it was like anything there because yeah. it, we're doing great work, by the way. Well, yeah, tell, yeah, them, yeah. tell them, tell them what we're doing. Yeah, so I mean, uh, this isn't my feature anymore. It's David Plus, but since he's not here, I'll speak for him. We think the absolute last bit of contention that you will ever experience in TempDB will be gone in SQL 2022. Yep. Wait a minute, <laughs> so, what? <laughs> that really? Concurrent, concurrent GAM, so every time we fix- And SGAM. Right, GAM and SGAM, right. So every time we fix a, a, a piece of contention in TempDB, it just moves further along the line. So the last thing in the line that could possibly cause object allocation contention is GAM and SGAM, and you will get concurrent GAM and SGAM updates in SQL 2022. I really hope that it is the nail in the coffin of TempDB contention. So let me get this right. So you have on tape, if not. I'm just said I hope. She said expectation. I, think. I, well, expect. it is our expectation. <laughs> let yes. me get this right. So I go to 2022. I get the right files. Still got to do that a little bit. That's OK. We help a little bit you there. Might, well, can I, can I cautiously, I don't know if anyone, I don't know if, if he's tested this. You might not even need. Oh my goodness. Are, are you saying points. that on tape? You okay. might not. So Pam is saying that I might can go to 2022 just as default. Maybe. Put on TempDB metadata optimization. Do I need that you as well? You might not even need that. We'll see. I mean. Wow. wow. I, we'll see. We'll see. We have to. Okay. I have to, so I of having multiple yet. files was precisely to spread out. So now, spread out so now all of a sudden, yeah. maybe what I wanted to have change is changed in 2022. Okay. All uh, right, you heard it right here. Perfect. It only took how many years? 20? Um, <laughs> yeah, 29 what years. There? <laughs> okay, who, what else? We, anybody in the audience? We got another question from the audience. While we're waiting for a question, if anyone has one, I, uh, I recently did an episode with David Plus on this. You did? Oh, you did? And he shows it, and it's like, and it's really cool. And he shows really it, that it just cool. rocks. It's so cool. So I could so go to Data Exposed? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Data Exposed. I've never heard of that, but I'll go to Data Exposed. <laughs> And, and watch David Plus. Is that Plus. one of those shameless plugs you were talking oh, about? Oh, I'm going to yeah. do a lot oh, of plugs. Happen yeah, yeah. aka.ms slash Azure SQL YT. <laughs> oh, right here. We have a question right here. Are there any plugs? This is moderator who asks questions. Are there any plugs for XB CMD shell to Linux? Oh. Uh, are there any plans? I don't know if I even want to ask that question. <laughs> That's all right, Dan. Go for it. Are, are there any plans to bring uh, XP command shell to uh, Linux? Are there any plans to be XP command no, shell to Linux? Uh, Pedro, that, what do you oh, think? We don't even want you to use it on Windows. That's yeah. one, the one thing I would remove. 
Yes, thank there you. There you go. Me. Okay, there you go. That's the one thing. Yes. No, wait. You so, know the other thing I would remove? Shrink DB. I forgot about that. Oh, shrink DB, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, we still well, need, we still need shrink DP. Yeah, okay, okay. we still need shrink DP, and we actually have so, something so new on that that I'm going to talk about <laughs> that oh, today. Oh, that's right. Yes. Pedro, that's explain right. a little bit more though. Like they're asking for that functionality, but why do you think that? Like, yeah. why should we remove it? I agree it's with you, by the way. But <laughs> you want to go? No, the Linux part I can take, but you, you go ahead with oh, Windows. Take, o overall, it's, it's, it's yeah. overall it's just a, a security area. risk. It is. Um, it is. If you are if you are running XP command shell. Um, and typically, I see most most users are running. Um, well, since we got since we got managed accounts, uh, it's more controlled. But the security um, surface area is too big, and one can do too much damage with XP command shell. Uh, it also um, it is also executed out of process, so it has it can potentially be used for even nefarious. Um, um, Attacks on on the on the memory space for the server. I mean, it's just a, a can of worms from a security perspective. And what do you need really need, really need it for? <laughs> I mean, I haven't. I understand. Denzel, though, you worked on the early days of Linux, yeah. so you know this, right? Talk about it a little sure, bit. Sure. So, I mean, XP command shell. The main thing you want to do is the command exec subsystem, right? So you'll need translation of all everything that you can do in Windows on Linux. You know, now. It, if you natively wanted to do it Linux, you would use Bash or some shell scripting type of mechanism, not really, right. you know. So technically, yeah. it's really not DOS even type possible stuff anyways, yeah. on so. Linux. Okay, okay. And the agent subsystem can, can do command exec um, yes. uh, actions. Yeah. So you don't, and it's not using XP command shell. Right. It's, it's the, XP command shell yeah. specifically, it's, it's too dangerous in my oh. perspective. So we did find something to remove. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Oh, right here, online, and then we'll get to you. Okay, there's, Dan, there's somebody behind you, so when you do this, we'll go back there. Okay, right. online. Yeah, so uh, from the online, um, how are the concurrent PFS, SGAM, and GAM page optimizations actually achieved? Is it by making the pages memory resident or by round robining them within the data files? That's a really good question. It's actually much lower level than that. Um, Kendall, did you want to talk about it, or do you want me to, do you know this? The, I'm going to point you to the Data Exposed episode. Oh, the Data Exposed <laughs> episode. So definitely Shameless go plug. watch the Data Exposed expo uh, uh, Another but, second, second plug. But I used to work on this before David took over, so yeah, I can ahead, answer man. it a little bit. Like PFS so, you worked on. I yeah, think. I yeah. worked on concurrent PFS. So yeah. so it's it's um, it's a special locking mechanism at the CPU level. It's an interlock. It's an interlocked instruction. So what happens is instead of doing a latch in the database engine like we normally do, we use a locking mechanism at a much lower level. And so it's uh, because it's, you know, because it's, it has to be held for a much, much, much shorter time. Um, and it, we don't have to, so we don't have to protect the memory with a latch because we know that the instruction, we're you know, protecting it down at the instruction level. So the physical page is protected, still thread protected. Yeah. We just have to use the latch mechanism, right. which makes it a lot more faster, tighter, right. and then you don't run these latch contention problems. Right, yeah. And so there's a number of, of things where, uh, when we do the, these are the optimizations that happen in the database engine that you don't actually see because we don't announce them. They're not, like, they're not like new features. But we have this like whole team of like crazy smart people that are literally looking at every little CPU instruction that's running they, and they're finding everywhere they can to squeeze just a little more time uh, out of it and so it's it's like I mean they're like crazy smart so the SGAM GAM will use a similar concept yeah. as well yeah because those are all three types of pages to get involved when we do all these temp table type operations concurrently right sweet yeah, awesome. yeah it's pretty cool love it okay back here yeah, yeah so for um, a roadmap question really around um, mass data management uh, what's the strategic direction for you know, products in this year and SQL for managing master data? Yeah, so uh, roadmap question around master data management. Um, what is the uh, the roadmap for uh, for that in in SQL and in Azure? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anna, yeah, take a shot. Oh, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can Do you have get a data to exposed that. episode yeah. for that? Uh, I will build a data exposed episode on that. Uh, no, but really, I, I, I personally don't know. Uh, but if you don't get the answer to any of your questions, like definitely, you know, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, and I'll, I'll help you. I, you I don't know all the answers, but I know people. Reach out to Anna on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would just also add Pedro. I don't know what you say here, but I mean. We, we, we know this team, right? Right now, there are no plan enhancements for MDM for SQL Server, Azure SQL. Yeah. They know it's still supported, but we just don't have any plans. There is, though, you can host the database, though, right, with Azure SQL, I believe. I think I've read that, mm -hmm. the, the data, the part of the, the metadata that they use. 
But as far as right now, there's no plan enhancements for that, for that software. Okay, uh, online or in the room? I want to make sure we address another question right there. There you go. And just picking up on earlier about things filtering back to SQL 19, the, the enhancements to have multiple query plans for a store procedure, will that get rolled back to SQL 19? Yeah, so uh, will, will the enhancements uh, for multiple query plans for a store procedure uh, be available in 2019 as well? No, the changes are too vast, we, we won't backport that. In fact, Pedro, it's a DB compat, that one's a DB compat one, right? That, right that one specifically is yeah. the DB compat 160, yeah? yeah. yeah. Um, and so that, there's no way to backport that. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? We have somebody back here? Back here? Oh no, oh no, oh no. We see who they are, yes, here we go. It, it's not bad. It's easy, sure. Uh, are, are there any features from 2022 that will be backported to 2019? Are there any features, Pedro, from 22 that will be backported that we can say? Uh, yes. Uh, for example, uh, oh, I don't want to say it. Yeah, no, I think I think we, no, it's in it's in the well, blog. the replication stuff. It's in the are, blog, so MI link MI link will be well. Let, yeah, let's be clear a little bit about MI link. So the link feature for MI, of course, if you use versions previous to SQL 2022, can be used for migration and rescale. Yes, yes. We're reserving the disaster recovery piece of this specifically for 2022. But Pedro, isn't the replication stuff already? The, the replication stuff. It's uh, in 19. Actually, we built it for SQL 22. Yeah. But then we thought, uh, there are people using 2019, they can use it right now. Right. The code is ready, so just, right. let's just put it there. So we put it in CU 16. Yeah, it's actually there. Ahead CU. of the SQL 22 release. Right. Yeah, um, and Danny, who maybe some of you saw Danny's session or heard him talk about MI Link, uh, when they announced the public preview for MI Link, this was part of it. Exactly. Okay. You have anybody, uh, one online, Ann? Okay. This is just a comment about the SDAM gamma optimization. All right, yeah, sure. So uh, first, there's a comment for Pam. Um, would be great if there was a doc mentioning uh, the optimization details around GAM, SGAM. PFS that you were, you were talking about. It would be about. great to have a document for the TempDB stuff. Yeah, uh, it's mentioned a little, the PFS one is mentioned a little bit in the TempDB documentation, but I'll make a note to tell David that he needs to. But also at this, <laughs> I, try to make, I try to make it a pack myself that when I talk about new releases, like when I hit GA, like I remember I did talk about PFS when mm -hmm. I did DEX and stuff, so I try to go through all those perf things and ask the team, what is all that stuff that yeah. nobody really sees? But yeah, probably Dave could maybe add some I, there. I will venture to guess, knowing David and how passionate he is about documentation, I'm pretty sure he's already written it. It's just <laughs> not public yet because we're still in the EA. We'll, maybe, we'll probably maybe he's have listening. to tone it down because yes, otherwise... He'll we'll probably have written yes. like five pages you on it. Thanks for that so. comment, though. We appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll let him know. And then we do have a question as well. Uh, what is the future for on-premises installations via Azure? Is on, are on-premise installations dead slash heading to an end of life within Microsoft? You mean, will there be a day that you can't install SQL Server on premises? That, no, that seems to that, be the gist, yes. That will, We're I, not envisioning that. No. That it will evolve in uh, what you can do, and, and we're already moving to, towards a hybrid model. That's, that's visible even in SQL 22. Um, you'll be able to extend the value of your on-premises installation of SQL 22 with some Azure features, both security, performance, scalability. Let, let, me, let me talk a little bit about what I hope will happen. I, I don't know yet because we're not far enough down the line, but what I really hope will happen is that the boundaries between all these products start to, to, to blur and disappear. That's kind of my hope, is that the experience of running the SQL database engine whether it's on-prem, in a VM, in a container, it, Azure DB, all of these things that it starts to get a little bit closer. So there will always be uniqueness in each one of the platforms, but the hope is that the, the, the experience of running them just starts to merge. So that's kind of, if there's any sort of vision, I think that especially with hybrid today, that's kind of what all of us are, are, are hoping for is a time when it's just easy. It, you just don't have to think about it. Where the database engine lives is just a, it's just an address and, and not necessarily a, a feature set decision, things like that. But if, you're, if the question was coming from a standpoint of, oh, I, I'm, I want to hold on, I will hold on to my SQL Server in my data center, it's just mine, no one touches it, my precious. We don't, we don't think that's, we don't plan to make it go away. Yeah. I mean, the fact, the fact that we're doing SQL Server 2022 is a testament that we still believe people want that, they want that Absolutely. functionality and capability. 
The fact that we try to make sure that the engine's invested everywhere, though, means we, we recognize, and quite frankly, if you ask me, I've been even talking to customers at this event, it's not an or, it's an and. Right. Like I have so many customers telling me, I need to be some on-premises, I need some of this to be in the cloud, and by the way, can I take that on-premises and connect it to the cloud? So, right. I, none of us here can predict 15 years, from, I mean, we can't ever predict stuff like that, right? But we still believe in investing on-premises, we're Im heavily involved in those conversations. Mm -hmm. So, it's a fair question to ask us. Okay, in the room, way back there. Dan, we're just really making you work, man. <laughs> oh, this is good. Got it. So for Azure Purview, uh, what level of granularity will be allowed for the policies? Will we be able to go down to the table or even column level? Yep. So Dan, you're going to love this. Yep. Andreas Volter is sitting right there. Raise your hand, Andreas. So can you run over there, yep. Dan? Dan, keep running. <laughs> Dan is a referee. By the way, he's a hockey referee, so he's used to this. <laughs> and Andreas, if you can give the answer to Dan and tell him, yep. then Dan will repeat your Bring answer. It. Right now, we're looking at uh, database level uh, granularity for certain um, certain preset of permissions, like the performance uh, tuning analysis. These scenarios are, are um, on the database level. But obviously, we're also looking at the tables and uh, columns themselves. Um, I can't really go into details yet. We will start a private preview on some time soon. Um, but expect that we will make use of attributes. And, and attributes are based on columns. Yeah, maybe Andreas, if you don't mind, so like there was a lot, right? Yeah, so summarize. let's let Dan summarize a second first what you've said so far, and then you can. Yeah. So so if I could summarize that accurately, so it, there's a lot of database level for for some of it, and then the goal is to get to the column level via use of attributes. Okay. But we're not sure where that's right. going to be. But Andreas, right, if I remember correctly, because I demoed this yesterday, right? I mean, like right now, you do, for, for policies, what you've got working already right now is you have these like predefined roles, performance monitoring, audit, and so forth, and that right there, does that apply, that applies to kind of the server though, right? For database, it applies just to Azure Database, but for SQL Server, it would apply to the whole server, is that right, is that correct? Yeah, what you can do right now is on, a, on the server scope, that's correct, um, but um, behind the scenes, it actually works per database. It's okay. just not exposed yet. Works for yeah. database, perfect. So, okay. does work but per database. Want, but, but what you were trying to say is we want to get down, if we can, eventually to the more granular level if possible. Yeah, Perfect. and just in case folks missed what Andres said, because sometimes it's hard to hear, uh, right now data policies is in private preview. So uh, something to consider is there's still a lot of changes that could come here, still a lot of feedback that we're going to get from folks during the private preview and the public preview, and we're working really closely uh, with the purview and the governance teams. Um, so it's a, it's a big investment for us. Awesome. Thank you, Andreas. Appreciate that. Sure. Right there in the back, Dan. Yeah, so uh, there are two questions. Uh, the first question is uh, extended events, great feature, um, hasn't really been fully embraced by the industry, and uh, you know, why, why do you think that is, and what, what, could, be, what could be done to uh, get more people using it? Okay, you guys want to take on the first one? Sure, so, so there are some... So extended events behave a little differently if you're talking on-prem versus Azure, right? I mean, I, I think the complexity, it, it's extremely powerful, but it's extremely deep too. You know, with, with things like query store, making query analysis fundamentally easier, the reliance on some of the things that you used to use profiler, which then translated to extended events, didn't take off because there's an easier way, honestly, to monitor performance in particular, right? Now on the Azure side, it, it hasn't taken off as much in, in certain cases because A, we block some deep level for instance database, level. For Azure database. For SQL database, yeah. Azure yeah. SQL database. Managed instance, you get the whole. Yes. For managed instance, you get the whole thing. Yeah. 
And then, uh, you know, the fact that kind of you have to configure the token to the blob, um, you know, and, and your writing of XC files is to a blob. So there's some, a little bit of complexity there. But re honestly, like the main case of X events uh, that customers used was around perf and query store solves a bunch of those scenarios which makes usability um, far easier than XC. Yeah, yeah that's fair. And that's fair. Yeah, and another thing is honestly, um, a lot of what goes into X events is helping CSS diagnose problems without having to take a memory dump. So like so much of that is just deep, low level stuff. And so maybe it's not as useful, you know, to end customers, like you said, because we've built so many of these other great tools to, to get the, the basic jobs done. But, but when it comes to deep troubleshooting, those extended events are, are, are incredibly important for sure. CSS and, and for the folks who are, who are you know, troubleshooting things on the back end. So I think it's, it's incredibly important and just it's maybe not needed for, for the everyday DBA anymore as much as it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say personally, you know, I've used this technology a lot. Um, it's still useful, it's a, tra it's a tracing mechanism, let's be clear, Denzel's correct. If you want to do performance analysis, why would you need to go do that all the time? But there could be some cases, by the way, where you really need to get a little deeper and trace certain things. So I certainly find still some use of it, but I would not say as much as Profiler was, it's just completely mainstream. I will tell you though that, you know, what is that classic joke, I walk up to a SQL server, you know, right now Management Studio or even in ADS, I can just launch XE Profiler and just quit start seeing some queries there. Use it for demos all the time, but I would not necessarily, for production use, I need it just to go monitor my server, right? Right, and actually so, it powers like the availability group dashboard, right? I mean exactly. like- Yeah, they're used for things, Yeah, right? it's, it's used to power a whole bunch of tools, but maybe not, yeah. you know. Well, think about system we, health we had, we had X events for every single right. new feature. Right. We yes. use it for yeah, right. monitoring, for troubleshooting, for- yeah. it's, I still it's, use system health session. So, yes, server, and, and we've, been, we've been adding to the system health session yeah, exactly. every version. Yeah. Yeah. So, so last thing to add on that, like there's a difference between monitoring and tracing, right? right? And there's a fundamental difference. All our telemetry on Azure is, like a lot of it is built on the back of XE, right? Yep. So XE is collected and, and pumped into kind of our telemetry systems and lets us do things like automatic detection, correction, bots to, to auto-mitigate uh, issues and create live sites before even customers see a problem on their database. But that's all done with some of the intelligent tracing using right. data collected from XCs. Right. You don't see it, but we use it, right? right? Yeah. So there was a second question, I think? Yeah. yeah. yeah so for SQL on Linux, um, does the panel feel that the investment has been worth it? And are you seeing a uh, good percentage of customers that are using SQL on Linux versus SQL on Windows? Short answer for the first part, if it's been worth it, in my perspective, yes. If we see uh, growth uh, in, in usage, yes. Uh, every month, we see growing number of users for both uh, production and development environments, um, and that's been steadily growing since we, since we introduced it. And so, uh, I would say also uh, containers. I would say yeah, containers exactly. is huge growth, and SQL it's SQL on Linux running. You remember Arc, you know, yeah. uses yeah, Linux Arc containers. Yeah, Arc is all built right? on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and especially in Azure, I would say like there's more Linux VMs in Azure than there are Windows VMs. Yeah. Like Linux is huge growth in the cloud as well. So, 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 so one thing I wonder. Edge. 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 Oh, SQL right. Edge as well. Kendall, Another one, Azure Kendall, SQL Edge. Kendall, Kendall Van Dyke here in the audience reminds yes. us Edge <laughs> uses Linux Edge containers. Edge uses <laughs> Linux containers yeah. as well. Yep, yep. So if your question was, do I move to Linux unless if I have a choice between the two, it really depends on your ecosystem. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say just move to Linux because Linux exists, right? It has to fit kind of your usage scenario, whether it's containers or microservices, you know, things that you're deploying or your ecosystem is fundamentally Linux. We've, you know, also seen, reason we've also seen some increased, it, we, we've always saw it in the beginning, but I personally see some increase from our partners, you know, Ubuntu Absolutely. and Red Hat, yes. yep. really more interested in the SQL aspect. They're seeing more customers ask mm -hmm. about that. They love to replace that system that starts with an O, yep. you know, in those Linux systems, so this is a great alternative <laughs> to that, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they work with us really closely. That's exactly. one of the things I like, exactly. is like if we see something that works very differently in Red Hat that versus Windows, 
we can call right. up Red Hat and say, hey, can right. we work on this? You know, so it's nice to have that relationship. Can we have a question online? Yeah. Uh, well, and I, just as an addendum to that, I know, like, as from a developer perspective, being able to use a Mac for all my development, uh -huh. which go. makes sure. yeah. right. Java, I know it's Microsoft, but, you know, makes Java development much easier. But sure. then I can also do my .NET and SQL Server yeah, development sure. there. Okay. Sure. So the question is, uh, could extended events store its trace files in JSON format in the future instead of XML to help with querying performance of the trace data? Interesting. Again, the realm of possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is possible in software engineering. Um, realistically, I don't think that'll happen because it's, 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 it's an entire framework and it would be reworking the entire thing. And we have, like, like Daniel said, we have all the telemetry, all the, the self-healing uh, features that, that we have, even that you don't see. They're all, they're all built on top of the, that framework and that schema, so it would be very, very hard to, to steer that ship away from this. Yeah, I, I guess maybe a follow-up question from, from my own perspective is, you know, there's nothing stopping you from ingesting no. those XML yeah. files and transforming them. Well, there's an XE reader, right? too. Remember, there's an XE reader library you can use, actually. You can go yeah. read this thing yourself and go write it out to JSON. But yeah, I don't think there's any plans to change it natively into JSON. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, another online question. Uh, love the separation of the compute, log management, and storage in SQL hyperscale. Will we ever see an on-premise version of this, even if it's a feature-limited version? Denzel. Uh, not to my knowledge. I mean, so there's a, there's a lot of coordination required between components, distributed database deployments, you know, have their challenges. You know what I mean, and and you know things like patching, version management, they'll have to be <laughs> infra built for that to deploy across kind of an on-premise environment. We don't we don't have immediate plans, at least, to extend kind of hyperscale scenario to on-premise today. Okay. Doesn't mean it won't change. There've been okay. asks. <laughs> yeah. Everything's possible, right? <laughs> You'd have to kind of recreate almost the entire orchestration. Correct. For, you mean for, like you, Azure for Arc? deployment for use. No, I don't mean Azure <laughs> Arc. No. Azure Arc is still uh, self contained in sure, what you're deploying. So we got and nine minutes. We have nine minutes left. Anybody in the room here? Has, oh, there we go over here. Oh, wait, sorry. We're here first. Oh, was, no, was, yeah. So we're here, Dan. And by the way, oh. just to let you know, there's, a, there's someone there. There. Okay. So we're going to get to you. Do this, and then I'll come over to that you. That sounds good. Yeah. I just done as you have you. Um, whether there's been an announcement of, of a roadmap this week um, and just any indication of um, take up of, of the product, people are actually using it ongoingly rather than just previewing it. Do you have any, any idea of any numbers or the way in which that's? Yeah, sure. So um, we have Purview went generally available in November. Uh, prior to the GA, we had a lot of adoption among customers, and now we're seeing a lot of people actually running with this in production. Um, there's a site, customers.microsoft.com. Uh, there's a bunch of really great customer stories out there with Azure Purview, and I, I think this is a big deal for customers. Like security and governance is only getting more important. Um, I mean, we have a whole team dedicated to governance just within databases, for example. Um, so we're continuing to invest in this space pretty heavily, and we're seeing great adoption by our customers. Um, you know, from a compliance perspective as well, like we're always trying to make Azure as secure and compliant as we can, and I think governance is just really helping that, and a lot of people are seeing a lot of value from this. Maybe folks remember Azure Data Catalog, and it had its own set of issues, but it had a really big value prop that people needed this thing. And so I think Azure Purview is like the time for us to get it. We're going to get it right. We're going to get customers on. And um, we're seeing that so far. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so the question was, the roadmap that was published in October, has it been updated at all? I, I'm sure it has. I'm not sure exactly which roadmap you're referring to. Um, but we do have, uh, I mean, unless other folks here know, uh, we do have purview people from the team in Seattle at the booth. Um, so if you, if this wasn't satisfactory, I would go talk to them. Yeah, sure. definitely. Right there. You guys are really good at adding, adding new features to SQL Server, and I'm really grateful for that because it's a great product. But sometimes there's features that are really good that were added maybe 15 years ago that feel that they're only kind of half or three quarters finished. Um, I mean, I can give several examples, like you had table value parameters, which are read-only, 
and they've been read only for about 14 years. Um, there's things like open row set, where you have to have string literals. You can't have a string variable, so you have to have dynamic SQL. And there's a few other examples like that. Are there any plans to kind of like go back and revisit some of these things and um, just kind of flesh them out and finish them off? Yeah, so, so to summarize there, um, uh, been really good at adding new features to SQL Server over the years, and, and as a community, really grateful for that. Um, are there any plans to go back and sort of finish off some of the features that feel less than fully complete? A um, couple examples. Uh, one, table-valued parameters being, being read-only uh, in the context of the stored procedure, and then um, open row set not supporting the use of variables, so forcing a string literal. Oh yeah, X query as well. Right, uh, that's that's precisely the sort of um, you call it completion. I would say that those are fit and finish, possibly uh, aspects of of every, uh, any given feature that um, we invest as customer delighters, as we call it internally, when there is a, a absolute need, a, a critical mass of customers requesting that. Why? Um, when we when you look at a feature, at investing at a feature, we look at solving at least minimally the 80% case, and then and then there are always niche scenarios, always niche uses for every single feature we put out there, language or or, or otherwise, and we'll invest in those, and we have throughout the years, but when we see critical mass of of users uh, requesting that, so. I'll have to repeat myself from earlier. Please enter that feedback in aka.ms SQL feedback. Um, let's see how it accrues um, votes. Also, by the way, in, not, not only votes, but if, if, if you have a, a different take or a spin-off of a scenario that you see there as a, the main piece of feedback, add that in the comments. Because under, uh, more fully understanding what, what we can, uh, with one investment, uh, um, be able to address more than one specific niche use case, that's what we'd, we would go after. Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I couldn't really uh, The that. comment was, I, I think there are lots of examples of people write blogs about some of these issues, and so he's asking, what about those things? Uh, what about? What people write in blogs, like people people post a lot about things that are yeah. right, and but we have to use a central. Place I apologize, exactly. but we don't we don't right? really uh, pull the blogosphere to what people are really writing. Uh, we have that central place, which is the feedback side, and that's that's where we that's where yeah. we really need to to. Yeah, there there are also some some items that were in the old MS Connect that have not oh, made it to I the new SQL ahead. feedback. Got it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. From from Connect, um, when we did the migration, I don't know, four years ago, and then we eventually also changed again from from uh, user voice uh, less than a year ago to to where we currently have. Uh, so to go back to to Connect, we took um, everything that was either less than two years old or had more than I believe 50 votes. So yes, there are a number of very low voted uh, items that that remain behind. That was simply a, a scale issue during the migration. And uh, more recently, when we moved from user voice to the new system, which we now have as an in-house system, uh, we, we brought basically everything. Okay, it's, we have like uh, two minutes left, so maybe one more question. Let's see here, back in the back. We'll see also online if we can squeeze one online in if we've got one. Yep, go ahead. You're not asking that question. Oh, so nobody, okay, this question is definitely question? not coming from uh, from our desk. Uh, one more time. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is a non. Yeah, will there question? be AGs in non-ARC Kubernetes? Ah, this is, he wants to know whether the high availability availability groups with Kubernetes, but you don't have to have ARC. The work we did in 19, the HAD work we did in 19 that did not make 19. And it won't make SQL 22. So, probably not at this point. That's <laughs> what I'm hearing from Pedro. I'll translate. <laughs> but at this point, 
I mean, nothing's impossible, but I don't know at this point that's going to make it. But so it's, something, it's also something that's not uh, dependent on the GA date of SQL 22? Yeah, that's fair. That's a good one. You said more a little, just a little quickly about that, Pedro. It, something that may land, but you don't, may necessarily be tied to 2022, right? right yeah. And we, we have a handful of that are in that, that's in fair. that realm. Yeah. That they don't depend on releasing with the code base in at GA date. They can they can happen after the fact because they're. So it doesn't mean we're not looking at it still. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Okay. We are. So at it. we are looking at it. Yeah. So one one minute, one last online maybe. Yeah. Last and it's a good last one. Last question. Uh, so for each of the panelists, uh, what is your own favorite feature in SQL 2022? In five seconds. Yeah, you got like five seconds. Don't Lightning. Start with me. Go, go start with the other. Hyperscale, Lightning. of Lightning. course. <laughs> Serverless. Yeah. Everything in, in IQP. I actually like in memory OLTP. It has its quirks, but it's my favorite. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Anna, you got Oh, serverless. Serverless. Okay, nice. All right, cool. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for all your questions, for your time today. Thank Panelists, you thank you. You did a great job. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the conference. We hope to see you the rest of the day today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.